She loves to watch. She loves to watch. Hi, I'm Art Fine. Welcome to Little Art's Poker Party. Coming to you on a rainy day in, uh, was it March? Is it March yet? No, it's the last day of February. Okay, February. Uh, rainy day, that's not, remember the Merle Haggard line that says rubber boots are still in style that's for manly right. footwear? Manly footwear. <laughs> well, it's leather boots, but I'm adapting them. Uh, we got a bunch of a bunch of good guys in, a couple of local guys and one out of town guy, and uh, we're mighty happy about it. Let's get the first local guy, Sid Griffin. Hey. Sid. How you doing, Art? How is everything? Yeah. Are you a, are you a, are you a solo guy now? Yeah, I'm kind of a solo guy. Uh, things went belly up in the Donkey Kong Riders, as they were so affectionately termed. And uh, oh, wait a second, no, we, that's, oh, that's a little obscure. You want to? Uh, let, let, look at this thing now. What yeah. he said was one of the. Look two, at his are thing. we getting a glare off this? I'm getting a glare as I hold it up. This is a. Uh, this was given to me last night. There was an AIDS research benefit, and the girl's name is in the corner. It's but Judy. That's the band you were in. Judy Wiseheart. This is a Long Riders album cover. And real quick, this is nine layers of cardboard, and you got to work backwards. In other words, only the top layer of cardboard is colored, and you cut out around everything. So when you look and see the bottom color white, that's a white sheet. Then there's a black sheet, then a yellow sheet, then a red Man. sheet. So I don't know if this tr translates on the camera, but this is nine layers of hard cardboard that uh, Judy Wisehart put together for uh, the boys in the band. She heard we went belly up, and she said we were her favorite band, period. And, uh, sorry, fellas. And uh, she just wanted to say uh, thanks for the memories and gave me this, and uh, there I am. That's little, you on the left. Little trivia, I had 102, 101 and a half, something like that, and I vomited violently within 10 minutes of that photograph. <laughs> and, nice uh, to hear. And uh, I don't know what else to say. There's okay. old Steve and there's Tom. There's well, Greg. that's a real groovy thing. Now that's uh, isn't that nice? That's the band you were late of. Late of. Thank you, Judy. What a sweetheart. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Well, thanks, Sid. Next to him, we got Joe Strummer. Joe. How do you do, all? <laughs> Welcome to the yeah, show. Joe. Okay. You're, are you? A, can we call you a solo guy too? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe me and Sid got something to talk about after. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean. Uh, you were uh, lead singer of the Clash for many years, and many, many. Now you're hanging around. Are you looking yeah. to form another band? No, I'm kind of just doing some a bit of music for film, uh -huh. but I'm just I'm not really looking at that as something to do long term. I'm more like trying to get my bearings. You know, it takes a while to recover from a yeah. ten years on the road with one group. You know. I can't seem to snap into it that quickly. Mm. No, Wait, where'd you where'd try you? six? I'm working on six, and I'm still hanging around my room playing guitar. Going, this sounds bad. <laughs> this sounds worse. <laughs> okay, we're gonna talk a lot to Joe, but we'll get we'll get these guys out of the way here. Uh, King oh, Cotton. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, King? Here again, solo number three. <laughs> That's right, you've been booted out a lot of bands. Let's see that one. Was... Didn't want to be. I had to be. People. Now wait a second. The last band we liked a lot, Bone Daddies. And yeah. you were not, I remember, uh, did you see him on the late show? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I did. It was really cool. What do you, you were with that? Mr. Diddley. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you played with him. Yeah, before. that's right. Yeah. So you had a real yeah. good thing going with the Bone Daddies, and I liked it a lot, and all of a sudden, one day, you weren't in them. Yeah, that's the way how it goes. You, how, how do you figure that? Well, man, I'm still trying to figure it out. I don't really know, but <coughs> I guess it's pretty good for both of us, the band and myself. I'm happy about it. Well, we dig you. Yeah, well. And yeah, I, I heard him sing that West African stuff. I couldn't believe it. Is that what that was? You know, with that. I thought it was West Texas. Give, give us a blast of that African stuff. <laughs> what, that uh, Mama Cool, Mama Sa, Maka Maka Sa? <laughs> mm. Yeah, I like that stuff, okay. Well, but that's under the bridge. It's like. Uh, he thinks it's not kosher. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, anyway, so you, anyways, you're, you're going solo now. Are you doing some work with uh, Bo Diddley, you said? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I brought you something here. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. That was One Eye Henry with uh, <laughs> Bo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hold steady for a second. That's not that. One Eye Henry? Yeah. Is that the same? Wore an eye patch over one eye. Not both. Different one. And, well, that's uh, pretty hip. That's a stuff. band I put together with Buster Bateman and uh -huh. Skeeter and Smokey Armel and Just for me? William Smith. Yeah, sure, if you okay, want. Cool. Uh, you can pay me later. Uh, with the bow, the bow business. I mean, when he's, you were working with him when he was in town, playing around town. But aren't you doing some recording or something? Well, I did some with the Bone Daddies. It never was released. We wrote a song about Bo, dedicated to him, called "Say Bo Where You Get the Palongo." Palongo is a uh, West African beat that's about a thousand years old and it's it's better known as Bo Diddley beat so uh -huh. he's kind of poking fun at him in the song and 
we brought him in the studio and he already for the first time really dug it. So he laid down a vocal track with me and a guitar track too and huh. came out real cool. Cool. Never was released though. No, it should be. Uh, also, and you can do some work with George Clinton? Is that yeah, that's coming up real soon, hopefully. Uh, George Clinton in Detroit? Well, we'll probably lay down a track out here and then I'll go back there to do uh, the vocals with George. Hmm. Hopefully. Cool. Glad Did you know the last bass player for the Long Riders was Larry Chapman, C H A T M A N, from uh, George Clinton's uh, uh, P Funk All Stars? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, not quite that. what you Some might expect trivia. for the Long Riders, but I mean, he's one of my buddies and he plays bass real well, so we had Larry with us. Played with George at Madison Square Garden and, you know, all the whatever. I mean, you know, hmm. the biggest venues on earth. I think George used to be one of the Flames. Did you know that? Hmm. Not really? I think he's also Chim got 15 Chim kids. Chim kids. <laughs> Let me, Boy, I've been working. Uh, let me ask you, I wanted to, I wanted to get that story down on that tape somewhere. <laughs> that story about, about Island Records and the Long Riders. It's just one of these touching record company stories and I wanted to share it with the world. Well, I mean... Uh, granted that I can say rather than you saying that the band is really soon? well liked yes. around the world. It ain't as big in America, it wasn't as big in America as it ought to have been, but it ain't like they're just kidding themselves just running around making records that nobody can buy or something. I mean, there's a big following in Spain and Italy and I used yeah. to kid you about that, but... I know, it was cool. fair enough. I mean, you yeah. know, well, what art is driving at is uh, we were doing uh, well abroad and doing very well in pockets of the United States of America, and they told me that uh, uh, we're going to have a big meeting in London. We've got some guys flying over. I'm going to go to St. Peter's Square, and uh, yeah, Island Records, I'll say, what, are they going to shoot me? Yeah, and, right. Uh, so we go, I go into this place, and the band's there, and I'm, I'm going in first, and they sit me down like you're in the principal's office. And the most memorable thing the guy said to me, in fact, really the crux of the conversation was, he starts yelling, and I start like getting really scared because it was like the principal's office. And he said, Sid, let's get one thing straight. And I'm like, okay, you know, we're going to have a video, we're going to have two videos, we're going to have a big, <laughs> big push in the New Musical Express and Rolling Stone and Billboard. And he goes, let's get one thing straight. I don't like this record. I don't like this album cover. I don't like this band. And Sid, I don't like you. <laughs> And I, and, I, and I sat there and I said, excuse me. And, we, and I went out and got a little cup of tea and Stephen said, hey, how's it going? Is he friendly? And I said, I'll be right back, Stephen. <laughs> and I went back in there and it, it got worse and, you know, it gets, uh, we get into four letter words and he says, you know, you, you know you're know, you not going to be in the record business. I'm going to be in the record business, but it ain't going to be with you as, a, as the guy here. And it went back and forth. And the, the end of the story is, well, I have a blood pack with Stephen McCarthy and Greg Souders that if I get within, I think it was 25 feet of this guy's offices inside the building, as it were, that I have a blood pack sworn on the, the New Testament that I have to throw his com computer keyboard typewriter through his plate glass window <laughs> onto St. Peter's Square itself. And I mean, we had we had a blood pack. I mean, it took a little Swiss Army knife. And you better bring your own typewriter. Those those plastic things will probably wouldn't just bounce off I the believe window. it. I'm not a real Led Zeppelin guy that throws the TVs out the window, but I think this one time will go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know that guy. I used to be with Ireland, too. Well, uh, Joe, you never had any trouble with record companies, did you? I don't know. It's, it's <laughs> trouble. Record companies are trouble. Uh -huh. you know? It's just, it's a, they seem to be full of, like, offices full of people pulling in one, di you know, they always seem to be pulling in the opposite direction. It's like a, a, I've never seen a, an office pull with me, you know. The Clash wasn't around for the video age, right? You didn't have to do no, videos, did you? No, we did. Luckily, it was kind of junior style, so our idea of making a video was, hey, you know, we meet at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and we're home by 5.30, you know, uh -huh. and we've done the video. Uh -huh. You know, run through the song twice and go home. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was a real cool one y'all did down in Austin, too. Man. Oh, that one, yeah. So I know that guy that owns the uh -huh. Lone Star Limo. Oh, yeah. Driving with that Arab guy or where? The, yeah, he was actually in fact a Mexican. Oh, was <laughs> well, we had to find an, an Arab, you know, in a, in in a, in Texas. So we we asked the Mexican bloke. I dig those jet fighters there too, the camouflage yeah, ones there. That was filmed yeah, there too. Yeah, that was yeah, that's no. that Confederate yeah. Air Force. Yeah, I used to live there. Is that the Confederate uh, Air Force? No, it's it's regular. It was regular. I guess. I I really don't know that much about it. But it was cool planes, though, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, that's you're, cool. You're doing, a, you're doing a solo thing now, uh, in the in the time in the times. Uh, Interview that uh, was really cool. That was real. Did you see that one yeah. with Cromlin? It's one of the best things I've ever seen at the time. Yeah, yeah. Really, oh, cool. really bright nice. eyes. I mean, uh, both you guys were great. Um, now, one of the th one of the, one of the things I picked up on was uh, just your own personal interest in 1948. Right now, I mean, that, I suppose that's an arbitrary yeah. year, but that's that era, right? Right. I mean, would you? I mean, I, I'm totally into it. Into Louis Jordan and Amos Milburn and Roy Brown mm -hmm. and Wynonie Harris and all that stuff. 
when have you, uh, what's, what's prompted you to get into that? Well, you see, when I was 16, it was blues was big, you know, in, in England. There was a blues boom, mm -hmm. courtesy of John Mayle mm -hmm. and, um, you know, Eric Clapton and all that stuff. And so we, we started listening to the blues, and from then I gradually worked my way back until I discovered, like, Wyoming Harris, and, or worked my way forward, rather, you know. Well, I kind of jumped to conclusions when you said 48. I, to me, 1948 is jump, guys. You know? yeah. Yeah. And it could have meant something else. You could have been into Frankie Lane. I don't know. It could no, have been anything, no, you know? no. There was only jump was happening, you know, Rocket 88. Uh-huh. So uh, when did you pick up on that transition into that kind of music? I mean... Well, it was about, you see, I was in a group called the 101ers in London in 74 and 75, and we were playing that kind of music. Oh, really? Yeah. That's nice. cool. Yeah. So this is not, because you were saying uh, you weren't really sure what you're going to do, this is not necessarily the, the, the new direction you're going to be doing. Well, I, you, you I know. just said that because I've done, I've just done a, a second soundtrack to a film, you know, so I've done two in a row. I did one for Walker mm -hmm. at the end of last year, and I just did one for a film called Permanent Record. Mm -hmm. You do the, the Sid and Nancy thing. Well, that was only one or two tunes. Yeah, well, now, now I'm into doing it all. Yeah. So you're actually scoring? You're oh. sitting there with the tape going back and forth? And, and yeah, yeah. Wow, that's real movie stuff. You're playing uh, with a friend of mine, Tupelo Joe, too, right? That's right, yeah. yeah I, I, really I put together a nice little group for, for this permanent record film. Huh. I called it the Latino Rockabilly War. Uh -huh. You know, and I had on the that's Rockabilly good. side, you know, I, I was saying to Tupelo, play Rockabilly, you know? And he goes, jazz, jazz, jazz. And no, no, no. But, you know, I had me, Xander Schloss, uh, Willie McNeil from The Untouchables, and uh, Tupelo, and we were playing against uh, Poncho Sanchez and uh, Ramon Banda from the Poncho Sanchez Octet. All right. Mm. That's huh. double cool, man. Mm. Can't wait to hear that. It sounds like the Buzzcocks. <laughs> <laughs> so are you, are you, you're you not going to play some of this acoustic t type stuff? I'm sort of asking this as a fan. I don't know if people out there are like, because you've been, you know, some of those things have had heavy acoustic guitars and all this stuff, which is the way a lot of us have been mm. uh, going. I mean, not really me, not us, but, you know, the Pete Case and all this business. Yeah, I played acoustic all across America with the Pogues recently. Yeah, you, know? you used was the Palladium. Right, yeah. I think I saw uh, you there. I saw you back. Hey, uh, man. I, yeah, I missed it, but I heard all kind of good things about that. They're really. great That's group. hip. Yeah. Pogues, man. you got to get them on the show when they come back. Cool. Yeah, Spider Stacy. And our pal Billy Bremner's been with them, too. Yeah, Billy plays on some of their records, but uh, somebody was drinking because he can't remember which ones. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, I say that, I think I can get away with that because you know the Pogues, I mean, their reputation is, sure. I mean, whether it's true or not, they have a thing of that they have a couple of Well, I, yeah, I can tell you that they ain't pretending. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. that's fair enough. I mean, They're the real deal, McNeil. It ain't cold that. tea in those bottles on stage. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> do, do, you, do you know Bremner? You know, yeah, no. well, I know of him. You know, I've seen him play in clubs. If you were hanging around a couple of days, he plays every Wednesday night now at the oh, yeah? Raji's over here, which is really good. Right. Are you are you maintaining quarters here? Or you got an apartment? No, I was just LA? here. I was just here to do that job on the film, you know. And I'm and I'm gonna go back to London, but uh, I don't really feel like living in London at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna come back and look for a bit more work, or maybe make some more, cut some more tunes with uh, that group. Yeah. So that, it's a, is that are you signed with a label? I, I'm still signed to Epic from the Clash days. Mm -hmm. And you have no great desire to do a record for them. For Epic? Yeah. Well, they never, you know, I expect sometime in the last four years someone would ring me up and have me, but nobody ever did. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame, man. I, I think we could just, I could go to his pad and and he could stay over at the house on Norton. I'll take his contract. He can have my contracts and just split. In fact, we can swap passports if you like, because I'm, I'm kind of tired. I've been in the same, pla same house in West Hollywood for a few years. Sorry, Joey. And uh, we could just swap lives for a while, like Prince and Pauper type thing. <laughs> Or two poppers, yeah. skip prints, erase, <laughs> cut tape. Yeah. Well, I, if I was, if you, we did that, I'd um, reform the long riders. I think tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's great. The long riders ride again. What's yeah. funny is we're all kind of dressed like the long riders. We could just get art to wear a jacket. We could go out there and it's like the plaid yeah, shirt, and everybody's wearing. Is that right? What's with this business back here, too, man? I meant to ask you backstage a while ago. I oh, never, that. Oh, I never that. Never knowed you there. That's nothing. Just something I learned over in England. <laughs> 
<laughs> you get that? Yeah, yeah. Bob Dylan. Oh, okay. Bob Dylan. <laughs> I did that on another show and nobody got it. You know, uh, when I was I got it. <laughs> when I was over in uh, hey, you know I'm a little traveler. When I was over in London one time, Bob Dylan was uh, what is the word busking? Busking. He was busking, you know, by himself with a guitar case open in the Tottenham Court Road. Were you over there in 1960? Yeah. When, when no, 1985. There? He was in the Tottenham Court Road tube thing, wearing a, 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 a the hood that comes on your sweat. Thing you know that uh -huh. comes down like this. He's got the peak here, and he's tied it here. And he's wearing reflector <laughs> aviator shades here. And, you know, it doesn't take that long for you to go. How many? Ro I mean, it comes out who you are. <laughs> it's not an Elvis imitator. You know what I mean? And it was like I think it was 25 minutes. The place was packed, and I got down, and this guy's brushing past me, and I'm looking at a guy who now is taking his place, and going, Oh, it wasn't Dylan after all. Going, no, he's left, and this other guy, the opportunist, took an acoustic guitar, <laughs> and is standing where Dylan was. He picks right into Come, you masters of war, and it's just some you know nice English kid. Yeah. Like, well, that's not Bob Dylan. You guys are crazy. And meanwhile, Bob Dylan's up on the road, walking down the sidewalk. Man, still, this guy still had like 60 Incredible. people looking at him. Yeah, you were there that time. Uncle Bob was in the tube station busking away. God. I mean, that's a great story. I mean, come on, it's a bit like when Howard Hughes went out to ride the motorcycles at like three in the morning. You know, when the guy in the pickup truck saw him and all that stuff. I seen the pictures of Paul McCartney doing that, but that was for a video, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't think that guy has to ride the tubes very much. I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw him on the tube in the video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> must have been his first time in 20 years. Yeah, I can't. I can't imagine. I mean, I've I've been on those tubes a lot. And I don't. I, I'm I'm always looking in case there's somebody I want to I want to speak to, and they're always looking at me, going, "He's an American. He's an American." Joe, which uh, you, you had a lot of bands that I like opening up on the Clash tour. There was Bo. Who else was there? Lee Dorsey? Lee Dorsey. Yeah, we we went around right. the country with so, him. So, um, well, you were kind of forcing good old American culture on America, which is That's a great right, thing. That's right. We was. Yeah. So were they? I mean, I, I imagine Bo was Bo okay received. Well, yeah. He, I think he went down great. Eight gigs we did with him. I think he, he, he didn't have any problem because he's a master. He knows how to work a crowd. Right, and you know? people didn't much want to spit on a guy that looks like that. Cause right, you know, he'll come out and pound you. Yeah, yeah, really. Now, what about Lee Dorsey? He didn't have quite as forceful a show. Well, he he had a real um, a band from New Orleans behind him called Score, and they were really tight, and they had all those Roger Pony records down really good, you know. Yeah. And so he just and he had, his voice was exactly the same like on the records hadn't changed, you know? Huh. So he just wiped them out with sheer did, quality. Did, did you ever see yeah, uh, Lee Dorsey's Body Shop in New Orleans? Oh, his Fender. For, tho for those that don't know, once Lee Dorsey, and this is probably something I should take heed of for him, quite broke, uh, <laughs> he took his money as he was sort of getting pushed out of the record business due to the changing tastes and, I mean, I don't know why, maybe too many, you know, electric guitar bands. And uh, Lee Dorsey took his money and invested in a uh, auto parts and uh, bodywork huh. place in New Orleans. That was the great pilgrimage used to go to, and I guess I hope people still are interested to go to. And Lee Dorsey had, and I guess it's still going, Lee Dorsey's Body Shop. Mm -hmm. And I don't know New Orleans well enough to remember the street, but that was his business. Mm -hmm. You go in there, and Lee Dorsey comes out with a clipboard, or his boy, who was like, I can't, it wasn't Lee Jr. or something else. They have clipboards and they're going, yeah, Mr. Griffin, this van is, uh, are you on a van? I thought you were talking about body shop like the Whoa. one down on Sunset. No, I don't mean like a strip joint. I mean That's like, you know, your fender and your windshield's cracked and some kid pulled off the, the medallion because he's going to wear it around his neck. And mm. Well, speaking of great talents like Lee Dorsey and Bo Diddley, yeah. we've got to talk about King Cotton for just a second. Hey, too. man, hold on. Before the end of the show, while we're talking about Louisiana, <laughs> hold. Hold it still. Hold it still. 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 <laughs> no, not no, cover it still. Just okay. hold it still. I brought uh, you a can of okra, which is the main ingredient in gumbo. That's right. You bring you, me some okra. You. Oh, he's taking our and, and you, Ladies a couple fingers. other things here. <laughs> That's for uh, this soggy Monday, an extra Monday that we have here in Southern California for you, you and the missus to uh, could cook up some gumbo today and enjoy that. Big old pot of gumbo. I want to thank you and very much. Enjoy this nympho cream here too. This is it's slightly uh, used, this is but a it's a little strong for me. But it's it's cool. How does that? Uh, oh, you can't see that. I just as well they can't see that graphic. China <laughs> nympho. And then uh, there's another. Another deck, deck of, of cards. Uh, the girly cards. I noticed you Thanks. don't use we my king size we ones we anymore. We didn't, we didn't play today. Give you some king size ones. This is like last time. Like Christmas. I didn't know you said, but I figured oh, you right. everybody could use an old fashioned back scratch. <laughs> that is great. Is that a corn cob? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can use it for other stuff too if you want. I don't. I'm in the right neighborhood. Person. Oh, there you go. Oh, that. wow. Is that a guitar strap? Well, it's just whatever you want to do with That's it. That's a guitar strap. Beat the kids with it. Oh, man. We've got to have this on stage strap. as a microphone. Man, you're going to be invited on a lot more. I'll this tell is you. Nice. Thank you. Sit. Kate. Sure. Later. It's real nice. This guy's a permanent member. Uh, he's <laughs> unbelievable, man. Thanks a lot. This is like payola. Yeah. Good. 
Well, you know, legal pay. It's legal pay. Well, no, who's going to turn it down? It's like you got to put this on your IRS form as gift. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, King, now that you've bought this, this is a sudden and a much welcome break, but we want to show a little bit of you from uh, what, tell me about this movie. Well, it's called Tape Heads, and it stars John Cusack and uh, Tim Robbins and uh, Mary Crosby, it's about Sam the Moore, is Sam it, and Dave. Is it about Junior the recording Walker. industry? Yeah, it's about in rock video producers, and I do a couple of skits in it, and this one little clip here is one little part called Roscoe's Rap. I play Roscoe of Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. Well, uh, the clip we have, you guys got it ready? I, I guess uh, let's run in and take a look at King in Tape Heads. All right. All right. Lowest chicken prices in town. We have got the competition scared chicken with our low prices. What a geek. I don't think How he's so bad. This, friends? You're There's a moron. A drumstick economy dinner. I $1. feel as a performance, he's evocative without being too expensive. Linda, that's crap. 65, you could do better? Yeah. Just take the promoter. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I could. Lady Bird Johnson off ramp and cut it left. You can park in the Hi, back. Roscoe. I'm an LG, video aces. Your friends, check this out. Roscoe's the name, and they call me the king. Grandmaster of the chicken and the waffle thing. I sit now, read my lips, and friends, don't miss a word. Cause the grandmaster's gonna give you the bird. And my food so cheap, you'll lick your plate clean. When I slow down, the ladies all big. Let's go let me taste your chicken leg. Come on, fly girls, and wiggle them their bottoms up. Waffles just pie and cakes with little squares on them. <laughs> That good. What can I say, man? Yeah, it's pretty good. I, I Are you the star or that other guy with the mustache? Well, yeah, he's one of the stars, too, it's all besides myself. Yeah. <laughs> it was a blast making it, though. I, I think it's going to be pretty good. I was just up in um, uh, the film festival in Park City, Utah, a couple of two or three weeks ago, and it, it got real well received up there. And um, So hopefully, if they ever get it out. Oh, you said Junior Walker's in that one, too. Right? Yeah, yeah, and Sam Moore, Sam and Dave. Cool. I also saw Hairspray up there that uh -huh. day. Man, that's the baddest flick. It's great. I'm dying to get the soundtrack. I mean, I've had those records before, but a lot of them I don't I've have now. The Madison uh -huh. and uh, the Continental. Who, who's the Continental by the guy that's uh, a white guy? It, it seems I don't like, know that. I don't know that, but I don't Oh, man, it's, it's so great. Uh, he used to be the Dovells. Oh, and, about Len Berry. Yeah, Len Berry. Mm -hmm. Man, it's such, he's mm -hmm. got such a cool voice. I love his voice. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Billy Bremner, he's in that band, we were saying, weren't we? Uh -huh. That backs up Sam Moore, which is, you know, a big thrill for anybody. Sam Moore, Sam and Dave, and Billy Bremner and from Junior. Rock yeah. And Junior Walker, and he said they were rehearsing over there at SIR, which is just a couple of baseballs from here. And uh, Billy said that the most amazing thing they did is they would rehearse the songs really quickly and get them down. If you haven't been to SIR, it's a rehearsal studio. They have a half court, or really a quarter court, a basketball court, right? 
And Billy said, those guys, are, you know, they're, hey, they're in 40s and stuff. Or would stop, get the R&B down quick, which they've all played and they know this stuff. Stop and then go play hoops. And I mean, he says they would go at it and nobody's wearing sneakers and they're leaving heel marks all over this nice court. And he said they were violently into playing hoops and they wildly perspiring and yelling and swearing at each other and then it'd be over and in like 30 seconds they're all back to being friends they'd towel off and they'd go rehearse the songs one more time split next day come do it again get through the songs as fast as they could mm -hmm. then shoot hoops and have these violent like you know urban basketball aggressive games do the songs one more time goodbye see you later and as a scotsman you can imagine he's sitting there with his guitar going huh We'll see. Uh, <laughs> How much is this costing me? How much yeah. is this costing me? Yeah, right. Yeah, they're really good, energetic in the flick, too. I think everybody's going to enjoy it a lot. You know, uh, I wanted to finish up on that. We're just about out. I want to finish up on the 1948 idea. i got to tell you the story I told on show number 11 or something, but I didn't tell it lately, which was that I... Uh, I was just a little kid then, man. I remember that show. <laughs> yeah. Liar, liar. But I, went, I was, in like 75, I was writing for various newspapers. I went into this club in the valley, and there's these people, a black guy playing a saxophone. And at that time, I'm thinking, these guys from the 40s, you know, I mean, they're like all like uh, blues singers. I sort of know who they are. I sort of don't. And I went in and looked at the guy. He's tooting on a sax and playing. And I had my camera. I took a couple of pictures and, and I left. You know, it's probably it's probably like Joe Williams or yeah, one of those older yeah. fellows. That they're nice, but I don't care about them. Uh -huh. And I was looking at the pictures about three years ago, and I looked, and it was Louis Jordan. Is uh -huh. that? Oh, and, I, and, I, oh and I walked in and out. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> you can kick your butt for that. Oh, God. <laughs> the guy was living in Altadena. I mean, at least you got pictures. Yeah, at least I could say in some cosmic mm -hmm. checkboard that I was there. You know what, the hippest thing you've ever given me on tape was that uh, it, his version of I Believe in Music, that Matt yeah. Davis song. Yeah, and that's it's so fun. fun. It sounded like it was done in the 40s. Of course, uh -huh. it's uh, yeah. written in the 70s by Mac Davis, mm -hmm. of all people. But I'll I give you a copy of that right all now. All right. So. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Really guy, right? I've seen him in England. Well, Louis George? No, no, you're thinking no, of Mac Curtis. Curtis. Oh. Mac oh, no, no, no. no. Oh, this yeah, is a, Mac Davis is the guy that did I Believe in Music. You know that song? Pops, oh, real pop. Plays Vegas. Yeah, yeah it's you know, kind of country, oh, yeah. you know, pseudo country. Well, all right, well, I'm, I'm glad you guys back. all came by. We're wrapping up. Oh, uh, Sid, reform the band real soon, okay? <laughs> okay, I'm going to reform the band. This is my new scepter. I'm going to be king. Take over from King Kong. <laughs> hey, now watch it. <laughs> that tells you a new name, the back scratcher. <laughs> the back scratcher. Hey, there you go. The back scratcher. <laughs> that ain't bad. That ain't bad. Do Slim Harpo medleys all night long. <laughs> and Joe, thanks very much for coming okay. by. Good luck. I will on the current stuff. That's just, just soundtracks right now, but yeah. whatever comes next. King, be looking for you in the movies. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, look for my 40s combo uh, called King Cotton Set out real soon. Too. King Cotton Set? Yeah, it's going to be out real soon. About six weeks I'll have it together. Be playing around town. Y'all come. You covering up the fact that you still got the mohawk? No, I ain't got it no more. I gave it to Joe and then he, he grew it up. <laughs> <laughs> Sid wants no, to I'm, it, yeah. I'm back there I again. I like gotta it. get a new haircut now, man. No more fans. So. She loves to watch. She loves to watch. She loves to watch. As the house face having little girls hard to.